algebra. So we have here our function notation. Oh, I'm sorry, I left something open. There we go. Um, we know that we can write um, in a couple different forms, but most notably y equals mx plus b, right? So today we're going to learn about writing and using function notation. All right, function notation. So we can name a linear function with our kind of uh, curly f here is the way I like to think of it. Um, and so we can use function notation. And the great thing about function notation is that it really gives us basically a point on the graph. All right, that's, that's kind of what's awesome about it. So we're going to actually take a look at this. Um, we've got y equals mx plus b is how we usually write linear functions. Function notation, we just replace the y with this f of x. All right, we call this f of x. All right, that's what that parentheses is. Remember, um, yeah, f of x. That's the best I can say right now. So when we evaluate the function, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change it. So our y turns into an f of x. We're going to use our function notation. And then we know here that x is 2, right? x is 2. So I'm going to take x out everywhere that I see it, and I'm going to replace it with a 2. All right, I replace it with a 2. Negative 4 times 2 gets me a negative 8. I keep that plus 7. And then negative 8 plus 7 gets me a negative 1. So I'm leaving over here exactly the same. So now instead of saying f of x, like I did up here, f of x, now it's f of 2. f of 2 equals negative 1. That's how you say that, all right? And here's why this is awesome. This tells us that when I plug in x equals 2, the function equals negative 1. Basically, what it does is it tells us a point on the graph. That point is 2, negative 1. All right, so we can plug in any x value. Those are just interchangeable, right? We can see, um, you know, when it's 2, when it's negative 2, which is our next one, um, and then see what happens. So I want you guys to try it with this one, all right? Try it with this one. Pause the video. All right, so we should have gotten uh, y equals negative 4x plus 7. We would have gotten f of x equals negative 4x plus 7. So this should be f of negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 2 plus 7. So that would lead us with a positive 8 plus 7. So then f of negative 2 should equal 15. So what does that mean? That means when x equals 2, negative 2, the function equals 15. All right, function equals 15. So let's take a look at our next page. Let's make some more sense out of this. Uh, let f of t be the outside temperature. So that means this whole thing is the outside temperature. All right, um, and degrees Fahrenheit, t hours after 6 a.m., we want to write the meaning, all right? T hours after 6 a.m. So f of t, that means this t here is the hours after 6 a.m. So when we look at this, we've got f of 0 equals 58. So this whole thing, remember this whole thing is the outside temperature. So that would be, it's 58 degrees Fahrenheit outside at what time? Well, 0 hours after 6 a.m. So 0 hours after 6 a.m. Well, that means that really at 6 a.m., right? Zero hours after 6 a.m. is just 6 a.m. So at 6 a.m., it's 58 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Ooh. So let's try our next one um, down here. All right. F of 6 equals n. F of 6 equals n. So this n is our outside temperature, right? Because that whole thing is our outside temperature. So the whole thing, n, is our outside temperature. So it is n degrees Fahrenheit outside when? Well, that's when our 6 comes into play. So 6 hours after 6 a.m. Wait a second now. 6 hours after 6 a.m., that would be noon, right? So at noon... It's uh, n degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's 
So let's take a look at this one right here. This f of 3 is less than f of 9. So that means f of 3 would be the outside temperature. 3 hours after 6 a.m. Wait a second, that would be 9 a.m. So at 9 a.m. is less than... And again, we have the outside temperature. Um, at And now it's 9 hours after 6 a.m. Well, wait a second. That would be 3 p.m. So then let's take a look at our last one here. We've got f of 2 is equal to f of 3. So that would be the outside temperature 2 hours after 6 a.m. All right, outside temp two hours after 6 a.m. equals the outside temp three hours after 6 a.m. And you could probably shorten that to being the outside temperature at 8 a.m. is the same as the outside temperature at 9 a.m., right? Um, something like that. So I want you guys to try this one down here. All right, this one down here. So these ones, F of T is still the outside temperature. Um, and this is T hours after 9 a.m. T hours after 9 a.m. Try those out. Check your answers out. Okay, now that we've tried those, let's take a look at this one. So we want to evaluate the function when X equals negative 2, 0, and 5. So we're going to have f of, I'm going to put this into kind of three different quadrants, so to speak. So let's do f of um, negative 2. So I'm taking x out and I'm putting in negative 2. I'm substituting x completely out, right? Both x's disappear. I put in negative 2 in both spots. My f of negative 2 just stays, and then I get negative 2 plus 6. Well, that gets me 4. So now let's do the same thing. We've got f of x equals x plus 6. I'm going to do 5 here. So I take x completely out. I like to put in parentheses. Um, it just helps my brain. So I'm going to do 5. So f of 5. Um, well, if I do 5 plus 6, that gets me 11. So f of 5 equals 11. And the last one was a 0. So f of x equals x plus 6. I take my x completely out, and I plug in 0 everywhere there was an x. So if I have f of 0 plus 6, 0 plus 6 is 6. So I've got three points here. I've got f of 0 equals 6, f of negative 2 equals 4, and then f of 5 equals 11, right? So my points would be 0, 6, negative 2, 4, and... 5, 11. Those would be my points. Um, let's try this one together. I'm only going to do a couple with you. So h of x equals negative 2x plus 9. Everywhere I see an x, I take it out. And I'm going to plug in, let's do 5. So f of 5, uh, we get negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 9 is going to be negative 1. So f of 5 equals negative 1. So that is my first, first point here. All right, I want you to try with um, 2. So that would be 0 and uh, negative 2. And I want you to try these ones down here. All right, try these ones down here. All right. Last thing I want us to do is to figure out um, what the x value was that gave us h of x equals negative 7. All right. Another way of saying this would be, um, you know, we have h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Um, and this whole thing came out negative 7. If we look at what's the same, that's the key to solving these, okay? So what's the same about these two? Well, they both have h of x. So that means I can take h of x out completely, and I can put in my negative 7. So really, it's like this. 
right? Negative 7 equals h of x, which equals 2 thirds x minus 5. So if I just ignore that h of x and rewrite it, I get negative 7 equals 2 thirds x minus 5. And I can solve it from there. So let's add 5 to both sides. So we get negative 2 equals 2 thirds x. And then I'm multiplying here, so I need to divide or multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to divide by 2 thirds on both sides. So multiplying by the reciprocal would get me 3 halves times negative 2 equals anything divided by itself is just 1, so it's just x. So this would get me a negative 3. So that means I plugged in negative 3 to get out negative 7. Let's see if that actually works. I'm going to do a check. So h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5. So we do h of, I'm going to take out my x's. Oops, almost off the page. So then h of negative 3 equals 2 thirds negative 3 minus 5. Um, 2 thirds times negative 3, that would be negative 2 minus 5. So that gets me negative 7. So sure enough, negative 3 checks out. That works. All right, so I want you to try this one down here. This time we have f of x equals 21. We want to see what x was if we have an f of x equals 21. All right, the last thing in here that I just want to show you, we're not going to go over it, um, is just um, that we know how to graph. So I'm going to put these on here. Um, we've got x and then we've got f of x equals negative x plus 4. And then this is f of x. Um, our tables look a little different, right? Because we've got x and then instead of a y equals, it's f of x equals. And then our last column here is f of x. And then here is our point where we have x comma f of x. Um, so for example, if I just plugged in 0, we would have f of 0 equals negative 0 plus 4. So f of 0 would equal just 4 which means our point would be 0, 4. So that's all you're doing where you're plugging these in. I would do 1 and 2 and then negative 1 and negative 2 as well. Not necessarily in that order. Um, so your table would look something like this. x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. f of x, this one is a 3x minus 2. And then here's your f of x. And then this would be your x, f of x point. I hope that helps. Email me if you have any questions. I know you guys already know how to do this, so I just wanted to show you that, hey, you know how to do it.